Hi, so this is Charlie Calvert and I'm back to um, give the third part in our little series here on read key. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to prompt the user for two numbers and we're going to add them together. Now, there's a couple curveballs in this particular one. That's why it's part three because it's getting a little trickier than the other ones were. And we're going to prompt the user first. We're going to say enter two numbers. I will add them. Okay. So there's our instructions. And then let's go ahead and say CW. Um, and this time we'll make it a right because we're going to prompt the user for some input. Enter first number. Okay. And then we need to get that input from the user. And so we'll do that the way we normally do it. We'll use this console key info. Remember, we've done this several times now. So input equals um, console.readkey. Yeah, and there's that little bit right there. And then we'll we're beginning to learn that we need to do a right line after we do that. And then we'll echo that out to the user. And let's go ahead and test where we are at this stage. Enter two numbers, I will add them. Enter the first number, and we'll say we enter the number four. You entered four. Looks pretty good, right? Now, let's throw a little curve in here, and let's say that we want to keep a tab on the number that we're adding up right now, okay? So we're going to say we want to keep track of the result, right? So we're going to make the result be an integer because we want to perform math on it. So we're going to say result, why don't we keep everything all in one screen here, result equals input dot key car. All right, so we're going to start by putting the value of the user's input into result. And so now, instead of displaying just to check our work, why don't we display result to the user. So we're going to run this, enter first number, we'll enter the number 6, and look, it says you entered 54. I typed in 6. Why does it think I entered 54? How did we get from 6 to 54? Is it maybe 5 plus 1, minus 1, and they're showing them both or not? No. There's something's going crazy here, right? All right, here's what's happened. Key car, run your mouse under it, key car is of type car. Result, as we know, is of type integer, right? So you can't convert even though the compiler lets you do it, right? This is where you would think a strongly typed li li uh, language like C Sharp would come to your rescue, but it doesn't. It didn't even tell you that you were making a mistake, and then it converted the darn thing over and made a mess of it. That's because they're both integer types. Remember, we've already seen that R is an integral type. This is an integral type, so it's going to let you make the assignment even though chaos results. So what's our solution? Well, we know before when we needed to do a conversion, we did something like this, right? We did int dot parse. Well, that should work, but wait, we got this red squiggly under there. Why? What's wrong? Well, if we press F6, we'll get the error message, and it says argument one cannot convert from char to string because parse accepts, expects a string. See? Look in there. If you look at it, it says parse expects a string. That's what it's expecting, and this thing's a key car, so it's not happy with what's going on here. So can we, can, can we talk the, the key car into becoming a string? Sure we can. We just call the toString method on it, okay? Now, let's try and run our program. Enter two numbers, I will add them. Enter first number, six. You entered six, all right? We're getting somewhere. Now we've got the first input as an integer, but it was a little trickier than you expected. This is a little harder example. We're digging into how things, life can become complicated. So now we want to get that second number. So let's get 
the second number from the user. And we'll do pretty much the same thing we did before. So we'll try to copy this and then see if we can get it to work since we're going to do the same thing over again. And this is a bad practice, but in this case, we're still early on enough that we're going to uh, um, we're going to do this. Now look what's happening here. We're getting errors. And look at what the error it says. A local variable named input is already defined in the scope. A local variable named result is already defined. It's unhappy with input. In input, it's unhappy with result. Why? We just block copied. Right up here it worked. Why doesn't it work down here? What it's complaining about is you've already declared input. So we can just reuse it. Okay? And it's got the same problem down here. It's just complaining you used it, so we'll just reuse it. We don't need to redeclare it again, right? We can just reuse it. But still there's a little tiny bit of a problem with our logic here. What we want to do is we want to get result plus the previous result, right? We want to get result equals the previous result, remember we entered 6, plus whatever the user just entered then. So we write syntax like that, or if we prefer, we can say the same thing by writing an operator that looks like this, which says add result to result plus that. So now, and then we can go, um, We'll do again, we'll do the you entered business again here. So and we'll do input.keycar to get what the user entered, and then we'll display the result. and that would be result. So enter two numbers and I will add them. Enter first number, 6. Enter second number, 4. Result is 10, right? So it worked. But it wasn't as simple as you would think. Okay? Um, I'll just end the video there and let you contemplate this for a little while. I'll uh, make the program available online as I always do and give you a chance to think about this one. There are some simple principles in here and some more complicated ones. So this will give you a little, little something to chew on. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you for watching.